As well as the usual twists and turns, Hugh Laurie's new adaptation of the Agatha Christie's murder mystery, Why Didn't They Ask Evans, is also jam-packed with famous faces, including the brilliant Lucy Boynton. Hi. Good to have you with us. Who plays socialite Lady Frances Derwent. Well, in just a moment, we're going to be speaking to Lucy about the series. But first, let's take a look at what we can expect. And the lovely Lucy joins us now. Can I just say the fashion oh, in this yeah. murder mystery is on another scale, isn't, isn't it? it? Was it lovely to play Frances? Oh, yeah. She's one of my favourite characters I've ever played. She's just such an electric character and is so bold and confident and kind of... Yeah, it's just beautiful. But that era, I mean, if yeah. you could... lovely, isn't it? If I was an actor, I just want to play yeah, that era. Me too. Oh, yeah. I've the stolen most style. of those costumes. <laughs> I don't including blame you. Including hobbies, so... so I don't blame you. This would be one of the lesser-known Agatha Christie mm -hmm. books, so tell us about the premise. Um, so it follows... It starts with Bobby Jones, who is working on a golf course and stumbles across a dying man who utters his last words to him and then enrolls Frankie, his childhood friend, who kind of cajoles him to go on this adventure and get to the bottom of it and solve the mystery. So which... no one is an official detective. It's not no. The these are amateur Marple sleuths. Here, right? Yeah, and they're not the you know smartest sleuths in town. But, but... they've known <laughs> each other since childhood, they haven't have. they? And they come yeah. back together and they just know everything about each other, don't they? Yeah, which is really beautiful because you get this kind of shorthand between them. You know, being operating with someone who's known you at your most formative years, and then they meet again in adulthood. So it's kind of this new spark and this new version of the relationship. But it's really beautiful. So. It's Gorgeous. Yeah. But there is a difference in class between yeah. the two characters. How does that yeah. pan out? Which I think is something that they were less aware of as children, and now that they're meeting again as adults, they're very much more aware of the societal pressures around them while also wanting to get straight back to that relationship that they had. So it's a kind of it's a really interesting insight into how to operate that. And as is always the case with Agatha Christie's characters, they're really intelligent mm. and yeah. very well written. So it's following people who are very kind of conscious of all of those things and trying to navigate that landscape. I mean, you've been around, like, great sets, great actors and so forth, but the, this is a roll call of, like, some absolute, oh, wow. like, national treasures, yeah. right? So you've got... You're working alongside Emma Thompson, Jim Broadbent. I mean, Will Poulter's, like, yeah. like you know, your alumni, is great actor. You're adapting Ag Agatha Christie with you, Laurie. I mean, what? Everywhere you looked must have been, yeah. like, it's pinch me. Pretty undeniable. And just, I mean, the Agatha Christie kind of starting point of then, but then to have Hugh Laurie's take on that, I think brings such a kind of contemporary comedy to it as well that makes it so appealing. But yeah, that was a kind of, it's such a trip. of. What's he like to work with you as a director? Dream. He's so kind of self-deprecating and dry and witty, but he cares so much about everyone's experience. Um, as well as the whole kind of landscape of these characters. And he loves these characters so much, yeah. so it was kind of... Well, he really loved your character because it was his, it was his, his childhood crush. crush, wasn't yeah. it? So yeah, no pressure. must have added so much pressure to you as an actress. It did, but it also made me feel safe in a way because you know that he loves her so much, so he really cares about the outcome of this character and the accuracy with which he's portrayed. So it made me feel, yeah, in really safe hands as well. I'd really like to see another sneaky... Yeah peek at this show because it looks so good. Let's take a look. I mean, come on, every scene, you must I be know. like, this is amazing. Imagine just... having Emma Thompson as your mom. I know, I know. <laughs> but also just getting to watch them play with that material and really have fun with it, but take it to kind of every different option, every different place. It was, I know it's such a cliched actor thing to say, but it was so inspiring. Like, yeah. you know. Did you have the space to like do re reshoot scenes and if you just wanted to play around with it and see what happens? I think, it, yeah, that's a kind of difference. I think when our director has an entire background in acting, he, it's such a different way to communicate and yeah. operate. So he has that shorthand and understanding of how to really dig into a scene and what it. all the possibilities are. Yeah, so it was what, a lot of fun. Amazing. What's it like to do Christy because like, Everyone knows, most people are, will have either read a book or, or seen a film at mm. least of Agatha Christie, so everyone knows, like, she's in our national consciousness. Mm. You were telling me before she's, like, the third most popular author right, behind... Shakespeare and Shakespeare the Bible. Shakespeare and the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you, are you able to sort of take a books away and immerse yourself in them before you start them? Yeah, role? completely. And I think that's part of the joy of it, like, that being your homework, really getting to dive into her writing and those characters. Um, so sorry, yeah. I can't come and cook dinner. I'm reading Murder on the Yeah, I just got <laughs> I'm my working. stack of Christie books. But no, it was such joy, and especially this book. I hadn't come across it before. And these characters are just so 
I don't know, enticing, and their relationship as it unfolds is just so beautiful. But and, and she always writes such kind of intelligent, crisply witty characters. Yeah. So it's just yeah, it's such a pleasure. Has this been a highlight of your career? Because the, yeah. the way you speak so eloquently about it, you seem like you're in love with this one. Well, so every time I get to talk about, it, I'm like grinning from ear to ear. I loved oh. this. I loved the experience of filming it so much. But also, yeah, just Frankie at the centre of it. She's like a. No, and well done on the Ipris file. It's been Thank such a you. brilliant kind of reworking of it. And I love Thank that they've been you. so faithful to it as well. Working yeah. with great actors again, Tom Hollander and so on. Yeah. Um, I think we've got a clip. That's the, uh, I think the, the conclusion of that is Yeah, coming the finale's up. on Sunday. I know. Let's take oh, a look. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, you can never work in a non-period drama. Like, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's too I much fun. I don't want to. It's yeah. so good. And really? Also you get a kind of behind-the-scenes history lesson and the fashion, just everything. You get completely immersed in it. So it's what's so next for you, Lucy? Um, after Evans, I went on to play Marie Antoinette in a movie called Chevalier, which was magnificent. I mean, your wardrobe really must be through the ages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm really getting through the costumes. <laughs> um, and then after that, I shot Pale Blue Eye, directed by Scott Cooper, and that's a completely different direction from Marie Antoinette. That's set in the 1800s gothic murder mystery horror. Oh. So staying near the murder. Wonderful. Oh, I love it. Congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. Why didn't they ask Evans? Streaming on Brickbox from Thursday, the 14th of April. It's and fantastic. the finale of the Ipris Files on Sunday, uh, this Sunday, ITV at 9pm. Thanks, Thanks for Lucy. joining us, Lucy. Thank you so much for Good having me. Good to have you with us. All right.